demonstrate a very simple experiment in physics which is Wheatstone's meter bridge. The aim of the experiment is to verify the law of resistances in series using Wheatstone's meter bridge. We already know what is the meaning of law of resistance in series, isn't it? Which is when two resistances are connected in series, then the effective or the equivalent resistance is x equal to x1 plus x2. We want to verify it with the help of meter bridge. It could be explained with the help of Ohm's law apparatus as well. But with the help of meter bridge, you get very good perfect results. So we are going to use this meter bridge for this particular reason. Again I repeat, the aim of the experiment is to verify x equal to x1 plus x2. The apparatus consists of meter bridge which essentially consists of a 1 meter long wire fixed on a wooden board attached with a scale. It has got two L shaped metallic pieces and a long piece in between as shown. This end is called left gap and this portion is called the right gap. We use this meter bridge based on Wheatstone's balancing network. We, now let's come to the principle behind this experiment before performing the experiment. Wheatstone's balancing condition requires four resistances R1, R2, R3 and R4 connected in the form of a quadrilateral. Across M and N the cell is connected and across A and B the galvanometer is connected. According to Wheatstone's balancing condition when the galvanometer shows zero deflection then R1 by R4 is equal to R2 by R3, isn't it? That is when the galvanometer shows zero deflection. Here we are going to replace that R1 by the unknown resistance which is x1 plus x2 equal to x and R4 we are going to replace by known resistance with the help of a resistance box. The point B is indicated by the jockey on the wire such that R2 and R3 are divided into two portions. We know that resistance depends on length. So R2 is equal to constant into length L1 and R3 is equal to constant into length L2 so that R2 by R3 can be written as constant into L1 by constant into L2. So effectively the formula used which was R1 by R4 equal to R2 by R3 becomes X by R equal to L1 by L2 because constants get cancelled. So again I repeat X by R equal to L1 by L2. In order to determine X, just cross multiply, you get X equal to R into L1 by L2. Let's make the connections now. So this is left gap as I told you. At the left gap, we have made the connection of the unknown resistances which are connected in series. Can you see this? This is X1, this is X2. We have connected them in series in the left gap. Over the right gap, we have connected the resistance box. From the resistance box, we will choose a known resistance. Let me take 10 ohms and say 5 ohms. So I am introducing a 15 ohm resistance from this resistance box. From here, we have connected it to the positive of the power supply from the negative to the key, from the key to the rheostat, from the rheostat to this point. 
which is actually N. From the central point, which is actually A in the diagram, we have connected it to the galvanometer, and then from the galvanometer to the jockey. I have chosen a long wire to be connected to the jockey so that I can take it this jockey from one corner to the other corner of the bridge. Now let's perform the experiment. That is, I have to find out at which point of the wire we get zero deflection. We have chosen, I repeat, we have chosen what from here? We have chosen 15 ohms resistance from the resistance box, which is in according to our formula, this is R. This is X, which we want to find out, isn't it? So I have taken R as 15 ohms. Let me just enter it in my observation table. Have we drawn the observation table? Yes. In the observation table, we have column for R in ohms, then L1, L2 and finally X which is equal to R into L1 by L2. Let me fix, press the jockey at this corner of the wire. Let's see the galvanometer. It is going to one end. Let me press it on this end. It goes to the other end. That means at some point of this wire, the galvanometer should show zero deflection. Let's try. Yes, there it is. Let's take the reading. It is 50. It is at 50. We are getting zero deflection. So L1 is 50. L2 is also 50. Capital X is R is 15 ohms. So let's put it in the observation table. That is R is 15 ohms. L1 is 50, 50. L2 is also 50. We can easily calculate the value of X. What is the formula? X equal to R into L1 by L2. So when I substitute 15 into 50 by 50, we get the answer 15 ohms. So the unknown resistance is 15 ohms. We can take two more readings from this by changing the resistance from the box and finding out the null point. Then we can measure L1 and L2. Let's do a little bit of understanding here. That is L2 will be naturally 100 minus L1 because you know that the wire has got 1 meter length that is 100 centimeter. So if L1 is 50, L2 has to be 100 minus 50 which is 50. That's why we wrote like that. Now, now so see, we can do two more readings and then take the average of all the three readings. That gives me the answer of X. The experiment is not yet complete. We want to, we are always, we physicists always want to verify in various other methods. So we will put these two, this resistance, this unknown resistance in the right gap and take out this resistance box and connect it in the left gap. Let me do it fast. What am I doing? I am bringing the known resistance that is the resistance box in the left gap so let me correct the unknown resistance in the right gap again we have connected x1 and x2 in series and we are considering this as unknown resistance x now again let's do the experiment. Now students, you should know one thing. Since we have shifted this resistance box here and the unknown resistance here, this particular length becomes L1 and this length becomes L2, correct? So again I have taken 15 ohms for my convenience. 
and then let me find out whether I get the null point at 50. So let me see. Let's find out whether we get the null point at 50. Yes, there it is. It's at 50. What do you conclude? That again x by r equal to l1 by l2. L1 and L2 have got interchanged, isn't it? Because I have put the unknown resistance here and an old resistance here. So x by r equal to L1 by L2. Again do the cross multiplication and calculate the value of x. So x comes out to be 15 ohms. Just like we did it on the left gap, let's take three readings on the right gap also and then find out the average. The final average is I mean you can do the calculations with the help of log values also if suppose the readings were not so accurate as we got you could have taken some other resistance from the left this known resistance box then you would have to do some more calculations you see use log book please and then calculate it then finally you get the final result as a um, average of both left gap uh, value of x with the right gap value of x add up the two divided by two you get the final answer of x so the final result would be what we want to very uh, we want to know the individual resistances as i told you the individual resistances are x1 is 10 ohms x2 is 5 ohms so the final result is x1 is 10 x2 is 5 so the total resistance x according to law of resistances in series is x1 plus x2 which is equal to 15 ohms by theoretical value x should be equal to x1 plus x2 we, get, we have to get 10 plus 5 which is equal to 15 ohms by doing the experiment also we find that we are getting 15 ohms thus the law of resistance in series is verified experimentally using Wheatstone's meter bridge. Thank you.